Hello and welcome inside the mind of Matt. You know, being a drone race director has been one of my newest passions. And along the way, I've accumulated some tools to help run a race more smooth while making the spectator experience more enjoyable and immersive. This is part one of a series where I'm going to cover some of them tools and then at the end, how to put them all together and get a stream and a race running the way I've got mine running. In this video, I'm gonna be covering how to get the FPV feeds from the pilots into the system. I use an all-in-one system and what we call around this area, a spy box. Makes it easy to carry, plug and play. If you wanna see what I got, stay tuned. So this video is not an instructional video. This is more me trying to inspire and show you what I did so that you can possibly emulate. I've got two systems here that I built. One of them is an analog only, and then one is using the Event VRX from HD0, which allows HD0 feeds to be transmitted as well. First, I'll cover the analog one, what's involved, how I connected it, and how to get it out. And then we'll take a look at the HD version. Let's take a closer look. All right, so this was my first rendition, and it was actually kind of an emulation from what uh, somebody else in the club had done. And I just wanted to make one for myself. Um, as you see, I'll just close it up real quick. Side first. So what I did is I took a computer power supply plug and just took it out. And I also used a wall plate. At one point I did have a coax converter in it. It didn't work very well. That degraded the signal. I learned a couple of tricks along the way, which I'll show you in the HD zero version. Uh, I got my HDMI output. And then I've got four of these RC832 5.8 gig AV receiver, high sensitivity. I put Velcro on the back of each one of them. They all have an AV, two AV in, inputs, as well as a power input. So this type of system, you need a camera DVR system. This, uh, I don't want to butcher the name, but that's what kind it is. I'll show you what the, the back looks like. Got eight inputs, and then the HDMI out, which that will go to the back of that and then it goes to the capture card and into the computer. For this you'll need a BNX to RCA adapter. I'll leave a link in the description for all of these parts, but there's a better system. It's all powered. You do have to have a screen and use a mouse to get into the screen and make sh it in the DVR settings a two by two. So that the output is just four channels in a two by two configuration. And you'll see later in a video how that's all programmed. All right, so let's take a look at the HD system, the outside of the box. This one's a little bit more thought out than the previous one. And I found these plugs, which allow just a round extension cord to be plugged in right into the back. Also, I have a Cat5 connection, which I'll explain in a minute, and the normal HDMI output. Let's take a look on the inside. So once again, like the other one, 
They're both in a kind of weatherproof case that I got from Harbor Freight. And I used Velcro for the fastening method. It's just worked the best for me. So as far as setting it up, I just kind of lined up where the two antennas were into the top, drilled some holes down, put my antennas through, screwed them on, and then with the Velcro, it allows me to, to move it up and down like this. So once again, this is a four channel like the other one, but this also has the capability on each channel to receive HD zero signals. It'll automatically switch back and forth. Now, one of the things that this system versus the analog system that you've seen previously, the disadvantage to this versus the advantage to that is this system allows you to only do race band one through eight, F2 and F4. The, the other analog system is a, gets all five bands with all eight channels in each band. This just uses the common channels used in racing that are compatible with each other. So there's four HDMI outputs and then they go down into a HDMI 4-in-1 quad multi-viewer. And this allows all four channels to be put out into one HDMI output, and then you get the two by two. Or you can, with this one, you can switch between one, two, three, and four channels individually, and then all four up at the same time, which is, that's what you want. So the output of that, which is HDMI, what I have done is I've gone to a HDMI splitter and that allows me to use one of the tools that I have found very valuable, which I'll show in a second. But this splits off between my standard HDMI output out of the back, or it also comes into this HDMI range extender. It has a powered transmitter and a receiver that's not powered. And it allows you to run standard CAT5 RG45 8 pin connector in between. And then your HDMI cable from this, one from your source, one to your target. So I use these in two ways. I use one to get my signal, HDMI signal from here to my capture card inside my command center, which I'll cover in a later video. And then I also, out of my command center, I use one of these to send my video to my viewing screen via one of these. So it works to get video in and then as well as to send video out. Now the other thing about this system is it has a built-in cooling system and I haven't had it on up until this moment where I'm gonna turn it on is because it is a little bit noisy in the background. And of course the dryer kicks off at the same time, which is perfect. But this has an interface here where it allows you to click and change in between the channels. And once again, this only is allowed race band one through eight, F2 and F4. Now to get the video from that into your actual computer, you're gonna need what's called a capture card. Now there are some expensive ones that are two, three hundred dollars, but I found on Amazon some of these inexpensive ones, which I'll leave links in the description. Once again, I have had a lot of success with these. Uh, I, this one is a little bit more rigid versus this one is a little bit more flexible. And as you'll see, like I said in the, in the 
upcoming video where I'm going to show my whole control center where all of this stuff connects, the flexible style works better for me. So this is once again, part one, one of the important things for the race director is to be able to see what the pilots are seeing. Also the track management system that I use has the ability to record the FPV feeds. And that way for review, I can go back and watch, make sure that no gates were missed, as well as if a timing edit needs to be made, I can actually see when they actually cross the start finish gate. Now, as far as costs go, the HD Zero version is definitely a more expensive tool. The HD Zero unit itself is like $600. Uh, I'll put up on the screen here how much each unit kind of breaks down with all the components. And once again, there'll be links for all these things in the description. So make sure you check them out. So this is one of the series that is upcoming. So if you like this content, make sure that you hit the like button, subscribe, turn your notifications on so you know when the next video is coming out. Until then, happy flying. Peace out.